Hi guys, Viking Reefing here. Today we are going to be talking about ozone. Um, ozone is a topic that whenever I post anything that mentions ozone, for example in terms of water clarity or anything like that, I get tons of questions from it, from you guys, the community. So there's obviously um, a fair amount of interest. So I thought I would cover my thoughts here on this video. To me, ozone is kind of in a weird place in reefing. Um, ozone has been present in reefing as long as there's been reefing, basically. Um, it was one of the very first techniques to enter the hobby um, to help us purify water and uh, get rid of some gunk and excess toxins produced from corals. But its use today isn't that widespread for whatever reason. There also seems to be a difference if you look at the American market and the European market. Um, I find the Europeans are more likely to use ozone uh, compared to uh, our counterparts in the US. If you look around at forums, um, there will be a lot of opinions about ozone. Um, People will be saying that it's dangerous um, and causes serious health risks, um, that it's not very effective, that it's complicated, um, and what have you. And I'm here to tell you, that's all hogwash. <laughs> Ozone is actually one of the simplest ways to improve your tank, in my opinion. So. Firstly, I'll talk about why I use ozone, and then I'll talk about some of the perceived drawbacks of using it. So, why do I use ozone? Well, two simple words, water clarity. Um, if you look at my tank here, um, the uh, water in this tank is basically like gin. There's no tint to it whatsoever. Um, I'll show you some shots uh, from the side later on, to see, uh, so you can really see that. Um, and I find that ozone kicks carbon's ass when it comes to water clarity. Carbon does clear up your water somewhat and removes like tannins and things of that nature, um, but it doesn't hold a candle uh, to ozone when tr in terms of uh, promoting really crystal clear water. Of course, I've used carbon as well in the past. Um, and one of the main issues that I have with carbon is that the effect really waxes and wanes. Carbon, no matter what the manufacturer states on the box, is basically only effective for two or three days at most. Um, those little carbon pellets are extremely porous. Um, they have uh, both loads of pores uh, at the surface and those pores get clogged very quickly and that's why carbon loses its effect rapidly uh, as soon as you've uh, put it in a reactor um, or a filter sock or something like that. And one of the keys to uh, success in reefing is stability. And just imagine that your water clarity goes up when you introduce some carbon and you're probably not going to be putting in new carbon every two or three days. So then it'll be slowly be going down over, say, the next 30 days. Then you refill the carbon, the water clarity goes up again, and then it goes down again. And what's the effect of this? Well, firstly, um, you won't have consistently clear water, which is basically the point of running carbon um, and absorbs some toxins as well, of course. Um, but the major issue I see with that effect is that the lighting levels in your tank will also wax and wane in accordance with water clarity. If your water has a yellow tint, not as much light will reach your corals. So throughout the year, your corals will be receiving vastly different amounts of light depending on how often you change your carbon. With ozone, that's not an issue whatsoever. You get a consistently clear water column. Um, that just doesn't change whatsoever. And I mean, we spend big bucks on like OptiWhite or Starfire glass, um, cool lighting, cool filtration, filter rollers and stuff. 
just so we can really see the beauty of our fish and corals. So why would you join change yourself by having your water clarity go up and down, up and down like a damn yo-yo over time? Another benefit and why I do run ozone is that you get rid of smells. I have a fair bit of water here um, in my, well, I guess this is almost a fish room now. Uh, it's probably going to be a fish room and slash entertainment room uh, once I get to uh, putting up a um, projector and a screen for that. Um, but I have a fair amount of water. Um, my entire system volume is just below 1,700 liters. And that does have the potential to well, give off kind of a fishy smell, um, if you know what I mean. And if you're living with a significant other, like I am, your wife will be very happy if your tanks don't stink up the place. Um, they'll be less likely to whine at you. <laughs> the third reason for running ozone is controlling algae and possibly some uh, bacteria and parasites as well. I find that when I'm running ozone, uh, I get a lot less pest algae, you know, like diatoms and things of that nature, um, because ozone is a very effective oxidizer. So when I, for example, scrape algae off my glass or um, I stir up my sand bed, it enters the sump, and it gets sucked up into the skimmer, uh, which has tons of ozone in it. Um, then it'll basically just fry those algae cells. So you will have way less algae when you're running ozone as well. There are some antiparasitic benefits as well. Um, I think it's kind of debatable on how effective it is, but logically it should have some benefits. Um, like I said, it's a very effective oxidizer and highly reactive. So for example, if you have any uh, cysts of uh, ick making it down to your sump and into the skimmer, I'm quite sure that they will bite the dust if, if they are introduced to uh, a little bit of ozone. And in terms of uh, controlling bacteria, I think it also helps. Um, I figure that once you've had a reef tank set up for quite a while, uh, there's a high likelihood of both beneficial and bad bacteria building up in your tank. And uh, I would try to uh, keep the number of bad bacteria down as much as possible and perhaps just dose some good bacteria uh, so I don't strip out all of that. So let's cover the perceived downsides of ozone. Something that a lot of people will be talking about is the health risks associated with ozone. Um, I'd probably say that they are hugely overblown. Yes, ozone can be very dangerous and harmful, for example, lung tissue. Um, there's no doubt about that. However, I've been in reefing for over two decades and I've never heard of anyone being hurt by ozone. I can hardly imagine how that would happen. I mean, since I've been, um, running ozone for quite some time and had multiple experiences with it uh, for different tanks. Um, I've managed to expose myself to ozone um, at, well, a fair amount of times. Um, I've had air tubes uh, come off, so uh, it's just been pumping out the ozone um, inside the uh, cabinet beneath the stand. Um, I've uh, accidentally uh, forgot that I had ozone on the skimmer, removed the skimmer lid, and it just kept pumping out ozone in the, um, uh, in the sump room. And I mean, the worst I've ever felt uh, in terms of ozone was a bit of a cough and a slight headache. And that was when I think I worked in the sump room for about one and a half hours or so um, with the skimmer cup off for whatever reason. So there were probably a ton of ozone in that room. So I mean, yeah, I mean, you can probably hurt yourself. If you remove the uh, air tube going into your ozone generator, you shove it up your nose and you go, <sighs> yeah, that's probably gonna <laughs> sting quite a bit. Um, but 
I don't think you really have to be worried about the health risks of ozone, to be honest. And if you are, and if you are a extremely cautious person, there are ozone alarms that you can get that aren't super expensive. Um, so if you do have a leak or something, they will alert you. Uh, the gas is also fairly heavy. Um, so it will mostly be concentrated on the floor and stuff like that. And it's also very reactive, so it dissipates fairly quickly. Another thing that you often hear is that it's complicated. Personally, I don't agree with that one bit. Um, I'll, I'll show you my setup later, uh, but I have an ozone generator um, that's hooked up to my skimmer. Uh, I have an air pump running through it and it's controlled by my prophylax. So I peg my ORP uh, at a set point, and if my ORP goes over that, it shuts the generator off, and if it goes below that, uh, it will turn it on. And I'm not entirely sure how that is to be perceived as complicated, uh, to be honest. Something that it will come across um, when people are comparing ozone to carbon is that ozone somehow introduces more maintenance um, and uh, again, I don't agree with that one bit. Um, as I said, I ran carbon in the past. I run carbon now as well, but for completely different reasons. Not in terms of uh, water clarity, but to suck up some uh, toxins. I run carbon like three days uh, out, of the, out of the month or something. But when you compare the maintenance between ozone and carbon, I mean, carbon, you have to change that out like at least every two weeks for it to be effective. Um, I find uh, messing around with the uh, reactors to be a hassle. Um, if you have it in like a filter sock or a filter bag or something, it's always a pain to change that out. It drips and yeah, it gets nasty. Um, the maintenance I do with ozone is that every four months or so, I open my unit up. I clean off the corona discharge cell uh, within it, which is what actually produces the ozone. And that's about it. Takes 10 minutes at most. And apart from that, it's completely maintenance free. I, I guess you can also add in uh, like uh, cleaning off the ORP probe every now and again, to make sure that uh, that's accurate and calibrated. It. So, Let's see the actual effects of ozone. So the length of my tank is 200 centimeters. So two meters in total. And as you can see, apart from some floating particles, um, the water is completely crystal clear. Um, there is no tinge to it whatsoever. And I am fairly certain that running carbon won't get you that effect. At least not as uh, well as ozone will. And if we look at the tank, from this angle, for example, let's watch this orange spotted filefish pecking away. You can see here, it's completely crystal clear. But let's have a look at how my ozone generator is set up. So, if you've watched my videos in the past, you'll know that I'm not terribly concerned about keeping a super neat sump. That's the benefit of having a separate sump room. I don't have to look at it. Only if you see that down there, that's a CO2 bottle. I'll uh, talk about that in a later video. Anyways, here is my ozone generator. It's a sander. C200, it puts out a maximum of 200 milligrams of ozone an hour. This is not its permanent spot. I've moved some stuff around and it just ended up here for a little bit. So how I run ozone is that I have this air pump here. It pumps in, what is it? 3.5 liters a minute of air. Um, this line goes into the ozone generator. Behind here is the corona discharge cell. Can't see it, obviously. Um, to clean it, you just remove these screws and then you'll have full access to it. It then pumps the ozone down to this 
down in this line here and into the ozone port here on my uh, Bubble King skimmer. Let's see if I can find a better view. Uh, nope. But anyways, uh, the Bubble Kings, they have a ozone port right here. Um, what then happens is that it goes down that clear line and into the pump and then it gets pumped up into the skimmer body where it reacts with the water and then it's basically almost inert after that. I, since I run a um, recirculating CO2 scrubber, I also took some additional precautions. So I have placed some carbon here, which is highly effective in terms of getting rid of ozone. Um, so I, I wasn't sure uh, in terms of how much ozone would enter uh, this cup, and I didn't want the ozone to break down like the plastic or the media or something like that. It doesn't seem to be an issue because I've been running this setup for, well, I think it's like seven months or something like that. Um, and I can't see any issues whatsoever here. When you are running ozone, um, and if you're not using a circulating CO2 scrubber, um, which will basically just trap the ozone in here. Um, since I haven't blocked off these holes, I put these carbon cups on them from Royal Exclusive just to make sure that there's no ambient ozone going out in this room uh, because I don't really like the smell of it, that's why. So, um, if they are, there's any ozone leaving the skimmer cup, it will get filtered out in here. Um, there's one issue with this application, it does, it's that the um, carbon gets damp and it's not as effective. So you have to change that out quite regularly. When I first set up my Bubble King uh, with ozone, I didn't have the air pump on it because it's supposed to be having enough suction uh, to not have to use that. But I found that wasn't really true. So adding the air pump really did bump up its effectiveness. Uh, something to keep in mind when running ozone, uh, especially for like airlines and stuff like that, is that ozone is an oxidizer and it will break down most things. So this is some sort of a, might be Kynar, uh, it's made by Sander, but it's totally inert to ozone. Uh, silicone uh, and PVC is fairly resistant to ozone, but it will break down over time. Um, and you will get leaks if you're running those things and you don't replace them very regularly. So I find that using something that is inert to ozone is a much better idea. Um, speaking of ozone being reactive, before it, uh, when I bought this Bubble King skimmer, these two lines were the same color. So both were red. Now this line is clear. So the ozone has broken down all the like red pigments or what have you in this uh, silicone hose, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, so I'll probably have to replace that uh, in a bit, but it's been going for like two years. No issues yet. The reason why this part hasn't gotten bleached or cleared out of the red pigments is because this is like a connector nipple. So um, there's uh, no ozone coming in contact with this part of the hose. Something to also keep in mind when running ozone is that a UV will kind of supercharge it. Um, so I run my UV in the same compartment of my sump. Uh, as I have the output on my skimmer. So what happens is the UV makes it even more reactive. Um, so when it exits the UV here, the ozone has basically just burned out. Um, so I would uh, highly suggest that if you're running both a UV and you're thinking about running ozone, uh, make sure that they are uh, close to one another so you can reap the benefits of that. And I think 
that's about does it for this episode on Ozone. Um, I thought it would include just a quick shot here of my little NIOS Opus 300 Pro, which is progressing nicely. If you like this video, uh, please hit the like button, it really helps me out, and perhaps even subscribe. If you have any additional questions about Ozone, um, please post them down below in the comments and I'll try to get to them. And that's it. Happy reefing, and have a good one. Bye.